The next reactions we're going to look at are a little bit harder, where we're reacting a strong acid and a weak base. We're going to assume we're at the equivalence point again, that we're reacting equal molar amounts of a strong acid and a weak base that would react in a one-to-one -one ratio. So what we have to do is look at how each component of that reaction, re, uh, how it reacts with water, what the water does to each component. So in step one there, we have the hydrochloric acid ionizing in water, that because hydrochloric acid is a strong acid, it 100% ionizes into chloride and hydronium ions. Then we have our weak base ammonia that reacts with water, but because ammonia is a weak base, it doesn't ionize much. It makes some ammonium and hydroxide ions, but not many. So that's why in step two, you can see the arrow pointing to the left is longer than the arrow pointing to the right. Step three is a reaction between the step one and step two. You're kind of adding those steps together. So the important ion, if you want to think about it from step one, is that hydronium ion. Uh, we're going to react that with the hydroxide that's forming in step two. And these guys come together, react, and make some water. The first way I'm going to show you how this reacts is kind of like a Hess's Law way where we're going to show some reactions being added together to figure out an equilibrium constant and then we'll see it a second way. So here's one way. You could think of adding those steps 2 and 3 together. That, that step 2 where the hydroxide was being formed and the step 3, the reverse of the auto ionization of water, if we add those guys together, then kind of Hess's Law style, the hydroxides would cancel and one of the waters would cancel, leaving that net reaction there. Ammonia plus the hydronium ion turns into the hydronium ion and water. If you are adding reactions together, you multiply their K values together. Since the K for that hydronium plus hydroxide makes two waters. That's the inverse of the auto ionization of water, and that's why the K for that value is written that way. 1 over 1 times 10 to the negative 14th. So if we wanted to figure out what the K net is there in that reaction, we'd multiply the 1.8 times 10 to the negative 5th times the inverse of the auto ionization of water constant. The result is 1.8 times 10 to the positive ninth, a very products favored reaction. So it heads towards the ammonium ion in, and water. As we saw in a previous video, the acid base reactions, they always head towards the weaker acid and base. So because K is such a large value, that tells you that ammonium and water are a weaker acid base pair than ammonia and the hydronium ion. That's one way for finding K. We're going to look at a second way of finding K if that was a little confusing for you. So another way to think about it, you're going to take the important molecules or ions from step one and two and react them with one another. Since step one is a very products favored reaction, that means we don't have any real hydrochloric acid molecules. We don't really have water. We have the chloride ion and the hydronium ion. Chloride's going to end up being a spectator. And so the big important ion from reaction number one, the acid with water, is hydronium. Then step two is a very reactants favored reaction. And so we make some ammonium and some hydroxide, but not much. The vast majority of the molecules stay as molecules, NH3, together. So we're going to take the big product of step one, the hydronium ion, and react it with ammonia because most of the ammonia isn't turning into ammonium and hydroxide. 
and we're going to react those important ions and molecules together. When we do that, our ammonia acts like a base, a proton acceptor. The hydronium ion is our acid in that reaction. After that proton gets donated to the ammonia, it turns into its conjugate acid, the ammonium ion, and then the hydronium ion turns into its conjugate base, water. If we were looking for the K net, how would we do that? Something important to note that's very easy to get mixed up. This is not KB we're solving for here. Ka and Kb values are when your chemical is reacting with water. NH3 isn't reacting with water, it's reacting with ammonium. So we can't just look up the Kb value for ammonia and be on our way. So how do we figure that out? When you look at that reaction, if you were to flip that reaction around and you had ammonium and water as your reactants, instead of being products like they are now, then that would be how we would write the Ka reaction. The ammonium reacting with water, if we flip that arrow around, it would turn into ammonia and the H3O plus ion. It's the reverse of how we typically write the Ka reaction. If we knew the Ka was 5.6 times 10 to the negative 10th, and we also know that we're flipping the reaction around, the reactants become products, products become reactants, we could take the inverse of our Ka value for ammonium, and that would tell us the K net for our reaction here. 1.8 times 10 to the positive 9th, just like it was before. Do the products of a strong acid, weak base reaction impact pH? So when we look at that reaction between ammonia and the hydronium ion, turning into the ammonium ion and water, if we're at the equivalence point, meaning equal moles of ammonia and hydronium reacting, so we have just ammonium ions and water left over. Would the ammonium ion impact pH? So you have to think back to our last chapter where we were thinking about salts being added to water. So if we had the ammonium ion, yes, that could impact pH because the ammonium ions could donate protons to the water that's also being formed. So when you react ammonia and H3O+, it makes ammonium and water. The trick that makes these reactions a little bit harder is that the products of that reaction can react with each other. The ammonium ion and the water can go on to have a secondary reaction where the ammonium becomes your proton donor, donating protons to that water, leaving ammonia and H3O+. Let's keep in mind that we're talking about the equivalence point on the next slide when we're trying to figure out what would be inside that flask. So take a good look at these reactions. We're making ammonium, water, and then that ammonium and water can go on to further react with one another to make some ammonia and H3O+. So there's the water that gets made in that first reaction. Those are your NH4 plus ions, your ammonium ions. But now a reaction takes place between the water that you see there and the ammonium ions that are there. When those guys react with each other, you get basically a secondary reaction that takes place. The reaction between the ammonium ion and water results in NH3 ammonia and H3O plus ions. 
being formed. Since we're at the equivalence point, we don't have any limiting or excess reactants. What that means is you don't have any of the original NH3 or H3O plus in that flask. They're both used up and you only have products, the ammonium ion and water. The trick is that this time the products react with each other to form even more products. So that original NH3 and H3O plus got used up, but your NH4 plus reacts with the water that gets formed to make extra NH3 and H3O plus. And those extra ions can impact the pH. If you have extra H3O plus ions floating around, when you're at the equivalence point, the pH is not going to be 7 in that neutralization reaction because when you neutralize your acid with your base, there's that extra reaction with extra ions being formed. And since we have extra H3O plus floating around, that's the sign of something acidic. Our pH would be less than 7. So here's our strong acid, weak base conclusion. You might want to read this slide a few times. It's tricky to figure out. When we mix those equal amounts of moles of strong acid, weak base. In other words, we're at the equivalence point. So there's no strong acid or weak base left over. When we react those guys, you make a salt. And the cation of that salt is the conjugate acid of a weak base. That conjugate acid has this secondary reaction with the water that also gets formed in that first reaction to make your weak base and your hydronium ion. So there's that example that we just saw in that previous slide of that secondary reaction of the ammonium ions reacting with water to make ammonia and extra H3O plus ions, and it's those extra H3O plus ions that make it acidic.